Can you build a no-code marketplace app on Bubble? This is a question tons of entrepreneurs have and one many of our own clients asked when they were first getting started with building and launching their apps. While marketplace apps themselves are fairly straightforward, you have two user types interacting and exchanging with each other, uh, adding on the niche touches and features can cause you to ask whether building a custom marketplace app is truly achievable on Bubble. That's why in this series, we're not just going to be covering whether you can build custom marketplace apps on Bubble, because you can. I'm also going to walk you through the development of core marketplace features so that you can move forward from these videos with a launching pad for your own app. In this video, which is the first in this marketplace app series, we're going to break down the core components of every marketplace app, go through different types of niche customizations that you're likely questioning whether you can build in, uh, and also talk about how Bubble handles those types of features. Make sure you stick around until the end because next in the series, we'll be diving into the development of certain marketplace features. And I wanna make sure that you know exactly which ones to look forward to and tune in for. First, if you're new here, my name is Gabby and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps where we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can launch their app-based business or grow their existing businesses all without coding. Okay, so let's get started. Now, what is a marketplace app. What are we talking about when we say marketplace? Well, you've likely interacted with one or two. Uh, here are some very popular marketplace apps and I'm gonna describe them briefly so that you can start to see the patterns between all of them. What are some common features that uh, marketplaces will have? So the first thing you know, you'll know you notice is that there's usually gonna be at least two sides, two types of users that are going to exchange um, something in some way. So it could be a product, it could be a service. So, so you'll have buyers and sellers or service providers and, and clients or customers. So for example, with Airbnb, you have hosts and guests. Hosts will put up rooms or apartments, entire houses to book and reserve so that a guest can come in and stay. Uh, with Upwork, this is a, a job board. Okay, So you have companies who are hiring uh, employees and employees will come in to search for jobs and then apply to them through the platform. With Etsy, you have um, uh, folks who are creating products, they're selling things that they make. It's a very kind of homemade, um, you know, small business uh, kind of marketplace where you can sell things that you have created. Uh, and so as a customer, you can search for things. It's all broken down by categories. Craigslist, very basic, simple marketplace, but you know it gets to the core of you know what it's trying to do is really just connecting people, and they kind of cover everything. Uh, it's not just specific categories. You know where Upwork is just about jobs, Airbnb is just about rooms and homes. Um, Craigslist is a little bit of everything, so it's a massive marketplace. Uh, eBay been around for a very long time, similar to Etsy, but uh, much larger. Uh, you know, you can have really big vendors selling tons of products on there. Um, so buyers and sellers is, is really the relationship there. And Amazon, of course, giant uh, marketplace system where you can purchase products as well. Now, from all of those, you can see, you know, what those top marketplace, common marketplace features are going to be. You need to have listings, right? You need to be able to search for the thing that you're looking for, whether it's a physical product or a service that you're, you know, wanting to book time with or hire. Um, so when a provider or a seller is going to offer their products or services, they need to create listings so that they can publicize and they can have all the details about the listings, the price, the description, images, um, and typically these are going to be standalone pages that, you know, as a, uh, a customer, you would go to to see everything in full detail. Uh, and so that, you know, goes hand in hand with search, right? You want to find the thing that you're looking for. Search is typically going to be um, customized in terms of filters and sorting options based on what type of marketplace it is. But generally, you're going to have a search feature of some kind so that you can see a list of listings, your, your search results so that you can then click into it and then see the listing detail page. From there, you typically move on to the payment system, the checkout system, uh, reservation system, the transaction portion of this connection, okay? So those are your top marketplace features. You're going to see this um, typically with, with any marketplace. And depending on what the focus of the marketplace is, each of these can be customized in many, many different ways, okay? So here are a couple of uh, examples of listings can be done, you know, 
similarly in that you want to see all of your results, you want to see the listing detail page on the left here we have uh, listing result for Airbnb. So you see some of the rooms um, or townhomes and you get typically top level details, you know, a summary of what that listing is. So the price, uh, if there's any reviews in there, how well it's rated, when it's available, um, the name of it, a cover photo, it looks like you can even scroll through a few different photos. But then once you click into it, okay, and I have an example here with Etsy. So here's the same you know, their version of their listing results, primary photo, catch the user's attention, um, title for the listing, again, reviews, how well it's rated, the price. Uh, but yeah, once you click into one of those listings, then you go to a fuller, more detailed um, information page for that one item, for that one listing. Um, so here's where you get more information, you can start to customize things, you might have access to more photos, um, and, from there, you can move into the payment system, okay? So search, huge with Marketplace. I mean, that's really your starting point so much that typically you're gonna find a search bar front and center at the very beginning, you know, on the landing page of the Marketplace site of the app um, so that your user can get started. They can search immediately and make it as easy as possible. Um, so here we have all of our different marketplace examples and all of them have that search bar at the top of their page. There's eBay um, with Airbnb. It helps you out to, you know, by selecting a little bit more than just a search term. But given that these are, uh, ho you know, homes or rooms that you're booking, it's very important to know well, where where do you want to look and for what dates. Um, so theirs is a bit more customized for that focus. Um, Upwork. Simple search, Etsy, again, simple search bar. Here's Craigslist and, and Amazon. And of course, from there, after you've gotten started with your search, you can filter, you can sort by different things. So you can really customize the results that come back so you help your users get to exactly what they're, what they're looking for. Here's a couple of examples of uh, different you know, payment designs. So again, I mean, with payments and checkouts, that's really where things become super custom because of the, the business logic, the revenue logic that you want to build into the application. How, how do you want to handle fees, um, taxes? Uh, do you want to do delayed payments? Uh, do you want to pay immediately? Uh, do you want to place an authorization or a hold on uh, you know, the credit card that's being submitted? There's lots of different ways to do it, let alone you know, the payment system that you integrate with. Are you using PayPal, Stripe, Venmo? You know, Bubble allows you to connect to payment gateways that offer APIs. So you're not just stuck with one type of, type of payment system. Uh, so you can really, really fine tune uh, this entire process. So uh, this is Airbnb's you know, getting started area for reserving a, a room. And here's Etsy on the right, uh, where we've added a, a wallet to our checkout and we can customize it a little bit before we confirm everything. Then we can get started with filling in our payment details and moving forward from there. So. Like, like I was mentioning, I mean, there's tons of niche features that you can add on to your marketplace uh, that are going to be unique to you and what your goals are and what your users need. So here's a, uh, a list of them that we'll actually be covering in the rest of this series as well, because uh, these are actually common niche features that can be applied to your application lots of different ways. So showing results in a list or a map or, or both. Um, this is something that really depends on uh, the, the focus of the listing. Is it location based or not? So you have the option to show in a list or show in a map. Uh, sorting results by calculated value. So for example, if you wanted to see uh, listings sorted by price with the shipping already built in, well, the shipping is dependent on an address. Right. So someone might see might perform the exact same search, but be on opposite sides of the country um, and see different results sorted. Uh, or I should say, sh see those same results sorted differently because their shipping costs are going to be different and affect that. Um, saving listings to, you know, like a, a favorites area or just bookmarking them so the user can come back, create a short list of things, uh, for example, with Upwork, that remote um, or I should say the, the job board uh, application where, um, you know, companies can search for talent and they can shortlist uh, applicants and talent that they uh, want to reach out to or, or move forward in their hiring process. 
Um, so a lot of different ways that you can do that as well. I mentioned authorizations or holds on payments, lots of different things that you can do there. Also depends on what kind of payment gateway system you, you want to use, um, what their options are for uh, checkouts, scheduling payments, scheduling anything, scheduling the publication of your listings, scheduling um, a, a reservation, confirmation emails that need to be sent out, you know, for example, with Airbnb, two days before your your trip or uh, a, a week after you've confirmed, I mean, you have complete control over the timing of everything. Uh, calculating taxes and fees, again, this is something that also changes and, and uh, is, it can be dictated by the payment gateway you use, but you can also combine that with custom logic that you build in within your own bubble application. Uploading listings in bulk. So if you are a vendor that has a very large inventory of products and you need to get everything into the system and not want to have to manually create things one by one, um, you can absolutely create that data in a bulk way where you know your vendors might have a CSV or it might be coming from another third party and you want to bring it in via API um, and have it brought into your application normalized in the database that you've created so that you can then you know integrate it into the rest of the application absolutely possible to do that um, creating custom pricing matrices so again if you're a vendor um, a, a seller of, of products that have uh, many different pricing structures, so different SKUs, different versions or variations of the product and uh, add-on items that might change the pricing. So you might have a system where vendors uh, can allow their customers, their buyers, to um, custom build what they're purchasing. So quick example, let's say they sell t-shirts, right? So you've got different size t-shirts, different color t-shirts, different materials, and that can all change the price even if there's, you know, the t-shirt product. There actually can be, you know, a dozen different variations, and so the vendor should be have a way to um, dictate what, what the pricing is going to be based on the user's preferences. Even, you know, at, at volume, maybe one t-shirt uh, with these preferences costs X versus purchasing a hundred of them brings the cost down. So absolutely possible to do that kind of uh, feature. Approval process. So if you have, you know, folks creating listings and there's a lot of detail that goes in there and they might need to be vetted for some reason, um, you can create a system to have an admin of some kind uh, approve, review the listings and, um, you know, either uh, move it forward or reject it or have it go through an editing round of some kind before it actually gets published live to be found in a search result. Um, and inventory management, I mean, I kind of mentioned this through throughout uh, these features up above, but uh, absolutely can have your users manage their own inventory, manage their own products, um, manage their own listings. Now, this is why we use Bubble for uh, achieving all of these different features. All of those really come down to just a few core um, capabilities. First, having a custom database structure. If you cannot control the way your database is built, the architecture of your database, then you're going to have a really hard time creating custom functionality with it. Marketplace apps are data-driven apps, right? Your users are generating the listing information and your buyers are performing a search. They're querying that data. So you need ultimate flexibility for both sides to do both things. So Bubble lets you create a custom database structure. What I mean by that is you have complete control over the number of tables that you have, how things are related to each other, labels for everything, um, you know, and really there's no limit. And, and the, um, the logic that goes behind putting together a, a database structure, there's, there's some strategy that needs to go into it, especially for marketplace usage. Okay? Uh, the second thing is your custom payment flow. So like I mentioned, Bubble can integrate with APIs and that includes payment gateways. So Stripe, PayPal, um, there's, lo there's lots of them out there. As long as it offers uh, an API, uh, you're generally gonna be able to connect to it. And that allows you to create custom payment flows. So anything from a very simple one-click checkout system to a multi-step you know, reservation system with confirmations, um, placing holds on credit cards, delaying a payout. Um, and absolutely, you know, with marketplace systems, you're typically going to run into a few different 
uh, payout scenarios. So payments can go directly to the seller, they get paid immediately, or they can. it can be a delayed payment that goes to the seller, or perhaps all of the payments go to you as the platform host and you pay out the seller. All of this logic you can do, you can control all of this. Um, and that includes you, know, you as a platform host taking out a fee from that, that transaction. Um, having the user cover the payment gateway fees or not, uh, it's really all under your control. Collecting payment methods, changing payment methods, managing those, you know, the, the different credit cards, um, handling things like uh, what happens when a card expires um, or if it fails, all of these things you can work with. Custom search is, of course, a huge feature that you need to be able to do within a marketplace. Otherwise, your users are going to have a hard time finding the things that they're looking for. So with search, you have filter capabilities, um, multiple filters that need to work together. So um, looking at uh, price ranges, location, how close is something to me if it's going to be shipped or if I need to go pick it up. Um, uh, ratings, right? being able to filter based on ratings or by category, subcategory, you know, you can set up your database structure for your users to categorize their listings so that it makes it easy for the buyers, the consumers to find things, right, by tags or keywords or, you know, a more traditional category, subcategory structure. This is why we use this platform, because you can do, you can leverage all three of these uh, you know, core capabilities to create very, very custom experiences for a marketplace. All right, so we want you to stay tuned for the rest of the series. This is, uh, that wraps it up for this video, but in the next one, we're gonna dive straight into the development of creating your marketplace apps search feature. Okay, this is a critical component to, to correctly have in place. Make sure to watch that video so that you can continue forward with your no-code marketplace app on Bubble. Plus, if you want to dive deeper into moving your app forward and as strategically as possible, head over to our free extended training at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop to learn how to properly scope your marketplace app, plus how you can leverage no-code tools to launch it. We'll see you in the next one.